Okay, so now let's bring up the client machine. Okay, we have two of them here. One is the domain machine, the other one is not. Okay, so this one right here is our Win7 test one, which is our domain computer right here, Win7 test one. And right now I have the both uh, LAN and wireless interface um, disabled. So before we go ahead and enable that, let's go ahead and show you around. So here we have the AnyConnect Secure Mobility Client installed with the NAM module. So this is what it looks like. At the same time, for us to configure the, the NAM, we need a Network Access Manager Profile Editor. Okay, so this is something that you can right now just doing it uh, individually but you can also create like a package where you can push to all of your client machines automatically using your tool of choice but this is how we're gonna create a, a configured L and you connect client okay so first thing let's go and delete so we can start from scratch let's go add call it lm wired to all group and here we're doing wired so 802.3 network we'll leave everything at default go next okay, it's going to be authenticating network here go next we're going to do both machine and user so select that next and we know that eap chaining use efast so efast let's say we, can, we want to validate server identity so leave that check and let's disable fast reconnects. So just want to keep it simple. Disconnect that, uh, uncheck that, and uncheck uh, check this uh, for allow unauthenticated pack provisioning. And click next. This is for the trusted server, and we're just going to leave it selected here with the trusted root certificate installed on the OS. So we should already have the root CA certificate installed on the client at this point next pack file let's leave it default click next and those for the the manual provisioning that we talked about earlier in the video let's use machine credential and now we're moving on to the user so again we do efas and check this and check this check this next again leave those at default next pack file next and we want to use a single sign-on credential, that means the AD lock-in credential. Okay, so done. And now we have our profile. Let's go ahead and create one for wireless as well. So add, let's call it LM to view LAN, or let's call it LM wireless. Okay, step through this quickly. Use all groups, wireless network. And we know the SSID is going to be called LM, or it's called LM internal. Okay, we know it's on hidden network, so if it's hidden, then check those. And go next. Again, authenticating network for security. We're using WPA2 with AES, WPA2 enterprise, and we have machine authentication. Again, eFast. Okay, next, we we'll use the machine credential for user. We we'll use eFast. Go next. Leave it default. Leave it empty, and single sign on, and we are done. So at this point, I want to go ahead and save the config. So we go file, save as. You can see by default it puts you under a new config file and the name of the file has to be configuration.xml. Okay, as indicated in the Cisco documents, this is the almost mandatory name for the config file. So save. Now that we have the file saved, what we can do is go ahead and enable our LAN interface. Same time, let's go back to ICE real quick and, and let's bring up the, the monitoring page. Okay, it looks like it's happened fairly quickly. We have a connectivity right here as indicated by the connected state and the IP address. And it looks like it's correct IP address as well.
And on the monitor page, we also see a successful authentication. Okay, so let's hover on over this. You can see for the same entry here, we have the username as well as the machine name. And that's what the EAP chaining, successful EAP chaining authentication looks like. The permit all authorization profile has already been assigned. So let's do a quick test and bring up internet uh, browser here. And we do have access to internet. Okay, so now let's take a quick look at the authentication detail. Let's see how it looks any different from a regular PEEP authentication. So first of all, you can, uh, immediately you notice the identity stores. Usually it's just one of them here. Now we have two. Since we have both user and machine authentication happens all at once. Okay, other session profile, permit all. And obviously we're doing eFAST with the inner authentication method of EAP or PEEP with MS Chat V2. Okay, username, again, you get both user and machine credential kind of bundle up together. And use case is EAP chaining. Again, identity store, just kind of repeating. And it match our wired user and machine. And right here, Let's see, we've got kind of attributes for both type of authentication kind of display all together. And what I want to show you is the steps. So you can see it looks a little longer than usual. Let's see if we can spot one for a user. Right here, let's see. Okay, so I say right here, select identity type user so we first so starting eap chaining we're doing user first and here it selects the identity stores of the ad and then it succeeded authentication pass as so right here it said radius is reusing existing section so this is the session so this is the second round of authentication within the same sessions And right here it says select identity type for a machine. And this is for machine authentication. Same thing, it went to identity store AD1 and machine authentication against Active Directory was successful. And then you get an authorization profile pushed out to you. Okay. So this is what the steps are, authentication steps looks like for Keep chaining now that we're done with wired. Let's try to switch to wireless and see what we've got here. So first I'm gonna disable just to make sure there's no mistake as far as connectivity. Enable wireless. Okay, here I had that disable earlier, so enable wireless. Now immediately it's trying to authenticate to our LM internal and it is now connected. Going back to, let's close that. Going back to our monitor page, we have a successful authentication, again, through EAP chaining coming from the wireless LAN controller. And it's got LM WLAN permit all assigned to it. Again, quick test internet. Everything looks good. Okay, now we're gonna lock off. Actually, want, I want to show you one more thing before we do that. So let's go to the authentication detail for the wireless that we just did. Again, everything else looks pretty much the same, except this one we put a condition based on the AD group membership. And what I want to show you is the external, let's see if we can locate that, external group. So you can see it's a little longer than usual. And it's actually a combined of both group membership of user and the machine. So here we have a wireless user that's definitely came from the user themselves. And at the same time, we have the domain computer. So just be a little careful here. Now the both user and machine authentication happens within the same session. You get the combined uh, information as far as the security uh, AD group.
So if you decide to condition based on a group membership, then just be aware that if you, for example, happen to allow a domain computer access only, then all the machines as part of the main computer will be able to to pass the EAP chaining authentication now. Okay, and that's why we are doing based on the wireless user. All right, so let's uh, test some more. And this time we're going to lock off and we're going to lock in using the uh, employee one account. So let's go force lock off. So employee one, uh, let's go switch user. Let's see what we have as far as that. Let's say it's just prompt us. And you can see right here, it keeps prompting us on the, uh, when it's trying to connect to wireless, it means something is not going through. So when we look at the monitor page, you can see the authentication for wireless for employee one is failing. And this is expected because employee one is not part of the wireless user that we uh, put our condition on. Okay, so both the authentication pass for both user and machine, it just happened is failing authorization. Okay, but if we switch that, let's see if we can switch that to wired. So adapter settings, go, let's go ahead and disable it from the client itself to disable wireless and then enable. Okay, so for the wired, uh, employee one can connect no problems. And coming back to the monitor pages to confirm, and it's a green successful authentication for employee one on wired, because we do not have such condition placed on the authorization rule. Okay, the next test that we are gonna do, let me, uh, that stays connected. Uh, we're gonna switch on to the non-corporate, a uh, non-domain computer. So let's, bring up our second test machine right here with the Win7 non-corp. So just a little FYI, when you're trying to set up this lab, I could not get the machine to send out the machine credential even with uh, after the AnyConnect client is installed. What I kind of have to do is to actually join this particular machine to the domain and on the domain control itself, show you user computers, we have to manually delete that machine from the computer directory right here. So you can see, although this one is essentially joined or thinks it joins to the domain, let me show you the computer and properties. So you can see right here, although it thinks it's still joined to labminutes.com domain, it is currently not known to the domain control because I have to manually delete that, which might be um, a good thing as far as it's, you know, the, a non-corporate, a non-domain machine having a any connect client install and it was not able to send the machine credential. That means if you're not part of the domain, you would not be able to access the network. But just in case in the scenario, like if you have uh, visitors who is already joined or basically have any connect client setup, just the way you have it set up in your company, it just happened to be a different domain name, then this is the kind of experience that you will get. So let's say that's the, that's our case here. So this machine right here, we have uh, pre-configured the wired settings. So let's see, we can kind of force it real quick by going to adapter settings, disable. Actually, let's do uh, lock off and lock back in just to force that. Okay, with employee one, password. All right, there you go. It looks like it took a little while for that to connect. Refresh, okay, there's a uh, something is a little different. So I guess it uh, actually took a while for the client to 
authenticate, but it looks like everything went through. And one thing that you notice is this time it's actually getting internet only instead of the, of the permit all. And this is because the machine is not part of the domain, at least to the domain controller. Rather, we wait for that to come up. You can see we have internet access. Let's bring up the web browser. Let's bring up CMD as well. Okay, page came up. Let's see. Okay, we're trying to ping internet. Okay, but let's try to ping a domain controller. Okay, you can see we cannot ping domain controller. And on the switch itself, we look at the session. We got permit all for the domain machine and we have internet only. Now look at the access list for internet only. This is what we configure with the downloadable ACL. Okay, now going back to the authentication detail for employee one on a non-corporate machine. You can see now identity store is only show up as one or only one. Username is still showing up as both as far as user employee one and the non-corporate machine name. Let's look through the steps and see if we can locate successful authentication. So first for user and looked up AD1 and it was succeeded. But if you scroll down and look for machine right here, trying to check with AD1, and it said right here, machine not found in Active Directory. Okay, again, it said machine not found in Active Directory. And this is how the machine authentication fail and how the eyes determine, let's see if we can find it right here, Eep chaining result, user succeeded, but machine failed. Okay, so that basically match our second, or the other authorization rule for the user only. Okay, so you can see that with Eep chaining, the whole process is a little cleaner as far as both user and authentication happens uh, together within one session. But obviously that will require you at this point to install an additional client or Cisco Connect client onto all of your uh, user computers. Okay, so there you have it. Eep chaining on Cisco ICE with uh, user and machine authentication. Thank you for watching labnits.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.